If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. A while back, we finished up this e-commerce series, and at the very end, I added filament admin panel. Now, the reason I added that was to demonstrate how you would take an admin panel and you would attach it to an already existing project. I got a lot of feedback about that episode, and you guys wanted a much deeper dive into filament, which that video was definitely not a deep dive. We did cover a lot of things. However, there are some pros and cons to this admin panel that I do want to walk you through, and I am finishing up a filament admin panel series to start recording very, very soon. However, there's one thing that you guys asked me for that I wasn't able to put in that project, and I figured that this project would be a much better fit for that, and that is the repeater field. Now, if we take a look at the example directly from Filament, what they're doing is they are taking the username and the user role and they are creating another field for members. They have some options with a select. They're going to make a role for that user and it's got validation. This is just the column width. So if we take a look down, you can kind of see it in action where they pick the name, the role, and then they can pick another user with another name and another role and another user with another role, and they can continue to add members in this way. So that's basically what a repeater field is. To get this to work, you would need some sort of a relationship or a JSON column to hold all of these different things. We're not gonna do this exactly the way it is because we don't have any roles for the e-commerce project, but we are gonna use another method. For this project, we do have an invoice system set up, but we are not saving any of our invoices to the database. That's what we're going to be using to try to get this repeater field up and running. Here we're going to create two models with migrations for them. So we'll do PHP artisan, make model. The first one will be invoice. And the next one will just be invoice item. We already have the relationship set up for all of this, so all we're going to do is just add it to the database. So we'll start first with the invoices table. We're only going to need a few things in here. The first is going to be the relationship for the user. So we'll do foreign ID. Let me move this up. And we'll call it user ID. Constrained. And then on delete, cascade. And then we'll need the date for the invoice. And then we'll need another table for the invoice number. And let's also go ahead and do the invoice items as well. This one is also going to be very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to connect the invoice to the products, and that's what the invoice items are. The first one we need to do is a foreign ID, and that's going to be for the invoice ID that we just created. Again, constrained on delete. Cascade. And then we'll also need the product ID. For this, we're also going to add the price. And our prices are in integers, so we're going to keep it that way as well. And then we also need another integer for product amount. So let's go ahead and add these fields to the models. We'll start with the invoice model. Let's also define some of the relationships here. So the first one is going to be for the user, and this is going to be a belongs to relationship. The invoice belongs to the user, and that's how this is read. We don't need these foreign or other keys, and let's import this belongs to. The next relationship we need is for the invoice items, and this is going to be a has many. Invoice items, invoice items. 
Okay, let's get rid of these keys. Let's import the relationship. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and do the same for the invoice item model. This too is going to be really simple. We're just going to define the fillable items. So we have the invoice ID, product ID, product amount, and the product price. So let's go ahead and run these migrations and make sure it's all good. We can go ahead and create a resource for the invoice with filament. So how we would do that would be PHP Artisan, make filament resource, and we'll just call it invoice resource. Okay, so let's drop this and we can close all of these up and head into our filament. And here is where it is. Let's check the browser and make sure that we're now getting this in the front end. Now we can go ahead and refresh it and we should see it right here. Great, invoices. So let's go and check it out. No records found. We have nothing in our database yet, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, we can go ahead and close this now. First, let's go ahead and get our table set up. And so we just want to create some columns for it. So the first one will be table columns and it'll be a text column. Make invoice date. This we want to make sure it's being displayed as a date. We want to make it sortable. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and do the next one. So this is going to be an invoice number. Sortable and not a date. This is going to be the username, which we have the relationship, which we just did. And we'll get rid of this date, but we'll also leave it sortable. Let's go up and start working on the form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a group and it's just a group. So it's called forms, components, group. And then we want to make, and then we'll come down here and we'll add the schema. And then we'll do form, forms, components. Hard and this will just make it a nice little wrapper for it. And then we'll do schema. And then we'll start laying some default items here. So the first one is going to be the forms components. This will be for the confirmation number or the invoice number. And we'll say text input make invoice number. So we'll do default string UUID, and we need to import that. Illuminate support, and we're also going to make it required. Just a quick note, I am only showing you how to make repeater fields. I have not connected this to the invoice service that we have so that when we are creating invoices that we can go ahead and do that. I haven't connected anything to it and some information like the string UID, some other things would need to be changed on the back end or the front end. You could set it up however you want to set it up to make them identical as when a user has made a purchase. This is only to demonstrate repeater fields. Let's go ahead and create the next one, which will be the date. And for this, we're going to use the date picker. For the invoice date, and I need a comma up here. For this, we'll just make the default now. And we'll also make it required. For the columns, we're just going to do columns, 
And on small sizes, it will equal two. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this briefly, just so I don't have to type it all out again. And we're going to create another card. Uh, we don't need this. And this will just be the placeholder. And instead of invoice number, it'll be products. And we don't need any of this. And we'll just leave it like this for now, just so we can see what's on the page. Let's go check it out. Let's go ahead to new invoice. There it is. And we'll change the sizing up and everything in a bit. But as you can see, we have the invoice number already here and it is a UUID. And this is the date for today. So now that we have the placeholder set, we can go ahead and start working on the other fields. And what we need here is the repeater field. And this one is going to be for invoice items so that we can pull in the relationships, which is exactly the next step, which is relationship. And I need a comma here. And then we can go ahead and add the schema. So the first thing we're going to do is a select. And then we're going to make the product ID, the label for that will be product, and I spelled products wrong, products, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, label. The next thing we're going to need are some options. So we're going to make a query, and we're going to import that product model that we have. We're going to say query, and then we're going to pluck the name and the ID. This will give us the fields that we need to connect the product to the invoice. So we're going to make this required. We're also going to give it a column span. And on medium sizes, it will equal five. And then I'm going to copy this to save myself some typing grief. And this one is just going to be text input. And then we're going to make product amount. We do not need a label, but it will be numeric. For a default, we want to just have one item as the default. We don't need these options, and the column span will be two. Then we can copy this one and do the same thing for the price. This one is going to be disabled because we don't want to manipulate the price that's already coming from the products themselves. So we'll just do disabled. Numeric can stay. We don't need the required. And the column span is going to be medium three. Or at medium sizes, it will be three. We should be good. Let me go ahead and shrink this up a little bit. We have product, price, and amount. After this, we want to set default items. We're just going to set it to one. And all that's saying is that the items that we have set in the actual fields when we load up the page, that it's only set to one. That's all that's saying. And then we want to add some columns. Medium, it will equal 10. Let me move these over a little bit. And then here, the column span. We'll just say that it's full. Okay, let's see what we have. So we have all of our information. We just need to spread it out a little bit. Uh, let's see, let's try to click one. Okay, so the price doesn't change, but we can change the amount of the product. And if we click add invoice items, 
then we'll be able to add another product. So first let's go ahead and make this full width. We have to come down right here and do column span. And that also equals full. And if we take this and we go all the way up, you see that this is for the whole group. So it's making the whole group width full. Much, much better. Let's go ahead and deal with this price. Filament has these methods that are ways for you to kind of interrupt a lifecycle hook. One of those things that we're going to do is under this product ID right here, not only are we going to make it required, we're also going to make it reactive. And what this means is that anytime something changes within the product ID, we can choose what field it affects. The method that we're going to use on this is after state updated. Once that state has been filled and updated, we're going to have a function state, and that's the field that we have. And then we are going to use a callable that's called set. And what this will allow us to do is set whatever other fields that we have, we can set it with the state of this field itself. We're going to say product equals product find, and we're going to be looking for that state because that's the field that we have. This whole product itself is the state that we are using to set another field. Find state, and then we're going to say if product. And we are going to set price. And the price that we're going to set is a number format. Now, this is only going to be to display it in the admin panel for us. But remember, our database has integers for this. So we will make changes for that as well. So we're going to say product price. And we have to divide by 100. And we need two decimals for that. Then we are also going to set product price as the product price. So this will be coming in from the form. And this will be what's going into the invoice table that we have. That's what we're setting that to. Let's go ahead and move on. Now, in order for that to be displayed appropriately in the form, we're going to have to set it here. This is fine here, but what we want to also do is we'll do it under here. Dehydrated. And we want to set that to false. So this way, this price that we have changed with the number format, it's going to come in decimals. We don't want that set to our database, which means that we have to use that product price that we're looking for as the product price for the form. That price has to be dehydrated from this price right here. We don't want any information going into the price. We want it to go into the product price, not price. We don't have a price field for that. So we do need to dehydrate it so that it doesn't get put into the database as this right up here. So that's all that that's doing. In order to handle that, we do still need to insert it somehow, or it still needs to be a field. So we're going to do forms, components. We're going to make a hidden field. And this one is going to be the product price. This is, again, as I said, the product price that we're setting with the actual product price, but it's going to be a hidden field. We don't need to see that on the front end. We need to see it as the price with decimals and dollar signs or whatever. This is going to be disabled because we don't want to change the state on that. So let's go ahead and see what we have and see how it works. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. We have our invoice set, the date set. Let's go ahead and pick an item. So you see now the price has been updated here. And if we change the amount, then we're going to have two men's one and each are the price of 99.44. Let's go ahead and add another item. We'll say this one is women's nine. Then we get the price for that. Let's go ahead and create. User ID doesn't have a default value. That's because nowhere in our form did we have anything for the user ID. Perfectly fine. As I said, Filament has these functions that kind of intercept the lifecycle hooks that we can use. So we'll go to invoice resource. We'll go to the invoice resource folder. And when we create an invoice is where we can make changes. So here we're going to have a protected function. 
And this one will be called mutate from data before create. It's going to be an array. And let me move this up a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab that field that we need to insert. And user ID is going to equal up ID. And then we'll just return data. So we won't even need to do that on the form. It'll mutate the form data before create and we'll just automatically insert that user ID with the authenticated user, which would be me. So let's go see how this works. So let's go ahead and add an item. We'll have three. We'll add another item. And women's eight. We'll add two of them. And then we'll click create. Product amount doesn't have a default value. Let's go see why. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up. And it does have a one. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the servers and make sure that that's coming in through OK, because we should be good. So let's go and check this out. Matter of fact, I am going to clear the cache as well. And we'll go ahead and try it again. Give me a second, I'll take a look and see what I did wrong, and then I'll show you what it was. Okay, and it looks like I misspelled in the invoice item model, I misspelled amount. And I'm sure you clever people saw that early on. But let's go make sure I spelled it correctly in the table amount. So let's try this again. Ah, there we go. It has been created. So we have that set and good to go. And it has redirected back to the edit invoice. And you can see we have our items here. So if we go to invoices, you see these are the ones that I was trying to create before. And it kind of went through, at least it went through on the front to the back end, but it just wasn't being saved correctly. And if I open that up, you see we don't have any items actually saved into them. Fantastic. If we take a look at the invoice service that we have, you can see here, this is where we've set everything up to create an invoice and to be able to email it to a user. So as I said, some things would have to change, but that's fine because we changed up some of the ways how we did some things. So in order to be able to do that, you have to make sure that your fields are set correctly to be able to insert it into the database. That is not something I'm gonna do. That is way beyond the scope of what I wanted to show you, but I did want to bring that to your attention for this particular project. But as I said, this was only about repeater fields and I hope that it was at least clear enough for you to get it up and running in your own projects. If you're enjoying the content, please go ahead and click that like button as it really does help out the channel. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like, and here's a playlist to follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.